the first few projects uh, have dealt kind of mostly with ad hoc queries. Uh, that is to say, queries where uh, the uh, database really doesn't have much uh, uh, much awareness of what is um, what is uh, happening. Uh, where the database doesn't actually know what's going to happen uh, at any point in the future. Um, in the third checkpoint, we're going to move to a uh, slightly more um, direct model where the database, ac we're actually going to be able to give it some hints about what uh, to expect. Um, and in order to accomplish that, we're basically going to look at a uh, case where we're basically going to look at a case where oh fun um, we're basically going to look at a case where the uh, the database is allowed to know what types of attributes are going to be interesting uh, up front. Um, what that essentially boils down to means that you have a little bit of uh, preparation time. Uh, so unlike the other assignments, uh, you're going to have a, uh, a small window at the very start uh, of the program to do a little bit of computation. Um, and we're going to be able to use that window uh, to uh, prepare ourselves, uh, to prepare uh, the, your code is going to be able to use that uh, window to prepare itself uh, to better evaluate uh, queries once it does get them. Um, so, loosely put, uh, what should you be expecting here? Um, let me really quickly organize everything. And uh, all right. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, because of the fact that you have a little bit more uh, time up front, and uh, because of the fact that you'll also be getting, um, because of the fact that you'll also be getting uh, some hints on which attributes are interesting, we're going to be able to uh, take the opportunity uh, early on to create indexes. Uh, these indexes are basically going to help us uh, answer queries more effect, uh, efficiently. Uh, so the, the two major differences, uh, as I said, the two major differences between uh, checkpoint two and checkpoint three are first off that you're going to get a little bit of time uh, before you do anything in order to uh, produce, uh, in order to produce uh, query, uh, to prepare yourselves essentially. Uh, and then you're going to be uh, given a uh, stream of, uh, of queries rather than just uh, individual uh, queries one at a time. No, sorry, rather than uh, one query per execution of your code. Um, so what this means is that you're going to have an opportunity to build an in-memory index and then use that index to uh, answer queries more uh, efficiently. So let me give you uh, a little bit of a preview of what that's going to look like. So I've got the, uh, ch the official reference solution uh, here. Uh, can everyone see that? Or let me make that bigger. Uh, is that big enough? All right. Uh, so I've got some data here uh, about a one, uh, a one gigabyte uh, TPCH data set. Um, so as a point of uh, comparison, I'm going to start up uh, the code without any sort of uh, indexing uh, beforehand. Um, I've got some uh, two relations defined in this customer table, and then I'm going to have it uh, load those two relate or not load those two relations, but uh, parse the create table statements for those uh, two relations, and then um, here we can actually show you. Um, so 
Uh, the customer table basically defines uh, two tables, the customer and the order table. And then I've got a couple of queries here uh, that we can try out. So the first uh, query is going to ask for uh, the um, for every customer, essentially, uh, the total price of all orders that they've uh, made, uh, and only for customers in the building segment. Uh, so we're going to put that in on the command line, uh, run it, and uh, wait. And then, as you can see, we get some results, uh, and it takes about five seconds uh, to run that. Um, if I do another query, it'll also take uh, a bit of time, uh, put that in. This time I'm asking for customers in the machinery segment. And again, you can see that it takes uh, a couple of seconds to run that query. Um, just for completeness, let's try the furniture segment as well. And once again, uh, three to four seconds. Not exactly super slow, but not really super fast either. So the change here is uh, the distinction between checkpoint two and checkpoint three uh, is that now at the very start, we're going to have a chance to, uh, before you get your first query, uh, the system is actually going to um, do a little bit of, uh, give you a little bit of a chance to uh, do some pre-computation. Uh, so in this case, uh, we are uh, loading the customer and orders tables into memory, uh, building indexes for them, uh, building indexes for uh, some other attributes that were uh, given. Um, uh, where are we? So, so you can see in the, the customer table, uh, we're given a primary key. Uh, we're also given a hint that we should probably be building an index on uh, the market segment attribute, uh, and for orders, uh, we're, giving, we're being given a hint that we should build an index on the customer key. So uh, if I run this, um, if I run one of the queries that I've been uh, looking at here, uh, so let's say uh, ask for the sum of the total prices in the uh, building segment, um, run that. And uh, as you can see, the query runs much faster. Um, depending on uh, the, well, let's actually try another one. Um, I think the second time this runs, it actually gets down to, uh, let's see if that runs even faster. Nope. Um, that one's weird. Not sure what's going on there, but for, most of these queries, uh, unless we run into weird problems with Java's garbage collection, then um, the queries tend to run uh, substantially faster. And even the odd outlier uh, is still going to be overwhelmed by the fact that we can run the queries uh, about six, actually gotten <coughs> ten, 10 times speed up uh, depending on uh, the precise query. So. Long story short, um, if you, um, you're going to have uh, a bunch of time ahead of, uh, before even uh, processing any queries to do a bit of pre-computation. And then we're going to be streaming queries in one at a time um, and timing how long it takes to run the individual queries. And you're basically going to be, uh, your, your uh, grade is going to be based on how many queries you can run uh, in a fixed period of time. So essentially, how fast can you run the queries given the opportunity uh, to pre-compute things? Um, let me also show you one other thing here. Um, this is going to take a few moments because needs to build the indexes. But uh, what you're going to see here is essentially two major changes uh, to the query plan. Uh, so the first major change that uh, exists in the reference implementation is that uh, we're adding support for index scans. Uh, so uh, here, we're able to take part of this, this query 
uh, that looks for uh, the market segment of customers. Uh, we push it all the way down to the uh, customer relation and then realize, hey, wait a minute, we have a index on market segment, so we can actually use that index to, uh, to uh, really quickly find all of the customers that belong to that particular uh, market segment. Uh, the other uh, the other difference here is that the orders relation has a index on uh, customer key, which means that we can very quickly find all of the orders that have one particular customer key. And uh, this allows us to uh, build an index nested loop join. So the uh, reference implementation uh, adds that as well. Uh, so uh, to be precise, there are three major four ma excuse me four major changes in the reference implementation here. Uh, the first is that it builds indexes um, as soon as it gets a uh, create table statement. It will um, build the indexes. Uh, it uh, adds support for an index nested loop join operator, and it adds support for an index scan operator. Uh, and then the fourth difference is that uh, the optimizer has, uh, now has two new rules, one of which adds index nested loop joins and one of which adds index scans. Uh, we'll get into the details, but before I do that, uh, any questions so far? All right, um, so let's uh, go through a couple of uh, concepts first. So just to recap, um, there are uh, several different uh, approaches to building an index. Um, so again, uh, purely from a conceptual standpoint, uh, there's a couple of decisions we need to, to make. Uh, the first is uh, the type uh, of index. Uh, so we can have, is that big enough? Uh, so we can have uh, basically two uh, general types of index, uh, clustered Uh, we can have clustered indexes and we can have unclustered indexes. Uh, what's the difference between the two? Uh, so a clustered index uh, store, uh, just to recap, a uh, clustered index uh, stores all of the records uh, directly in the index, while an unclustered index stores pointers to the records. A typical design strategy uh, is to have one clustered index and then have all of your other indexes uh, pointing to that main clustered index. So you can think of, uh, for example, customer has, has a cust key and then a bunch of other attributes. So a clustered index would basically have a set of customer keys uh, pointing to uh, the rest of the tuple. And so forth. Um, so if you wanted to, if you had a specific customer key, you could find the entire rest of the tuple that matched that particular, uh, that particular uh, customer key. Uh, an unclustered index, by, uh, on the other hand, um, so let's say uh, something like market segment, uh, would have a market segment. So let's say, for example, building one, uh, building. Pointing to, and then uh, a customer key or a set of customer keys that had that particular uh, market segment. Um,
So for example, if I wanted to find all of the customers that uh, were in the building segment, I'd go into my I'd go into my unclustered index, find the entry for building, find all of the customer keys that matched uh, that that fell into that bucket, then go into my clustered index, find the customer, the first customer key that was in that bucket, and then I'd have the first tuple that was in that market segment. And then I'd find the second key that was in that bucket, and I'd have the second tuple that uh, matched that customer key. Uh, questions so far? Okay, um, so again, uh, the distinction between clustered and unclustered is whether you store uh, the full tuple uh, versus a pointer, pointer, key, uh, or other way to uniquely uh, or another way to uniquely ref, uh, reference uh, the full tuple. Um, again, I would suggest having one clustered index and then uh, all other indexes be unclustered because otherwise you're not going to have enough space uh, to your if you have multiple clustered indexes, you need multiple copies of the tuple, you're not going to have space for that. Uh, okay, so the second, um, the second consideration is the arity of the index. Um, And that's uh, whether the index has, uh, whether every key, uh, every key for the index uniquely identifies one tuple in the relation. In other words, if the key for the index is actually a key uh, for the relation itself. Um, the distinction here is on whether you store one tuple in the body of your index, uh, in, in the index itself, or whether you need to store a list of tuples uh, in your index. Um, in general, the default should be non-unique, um, but you know, let's uh, bring up the example relations. Uh, so you're basically going to get uh, two types of index uh, definitions in, uh, in the create table statements, uh, one set of primary key definitions and one set of uh, index definitions. Uh, primary keys are, by the fact that they're primary keys, guaranteed to be unique. Um, other indexes, uh, you should assume that they are non-unique. Um, questions so far? All right. So one last consideration is uh, uh, one last question is uh, the organization of the index, uh, and this is basically going to be. Uh, whether you store the uh, tuples in some sort uh, organized by their hash code, or whether you store them in some sort of uh, tree structure or uh, in sorted order. Um, hash indexes work very well if you don't need to compare things. Tree indexes work very well if you do need to compare things. Um, 
A reasonable default is to use tree indexes everywhere. Uh, in the reference implementation, uh, the reference implementation uses hash indexes for uh, the primary keys and tree indexes for everything else. Um, more precisely, So, like I said, there are two types of index definitions. Uh, in the reference implementation, uh, there are basically two uh, types of indexes. Primary key indexes are organized um, as clustered unique hash indexes, and um, all of the other indexes, the ones that are just specified by index, are um, defined as unclustered non-unique tree indexes. Questions so far? OK, so this is all good, uh, all well and good in principle. How does this actually, um, how does this actually get uh, resolved into practice? So uh, the create table, um, where do I have? Uh, there we go. So let's really quickly take a look at the create table um, object. So um, every create table object has, uh, that JSQL parser gives you has a uh, list of indexes associated with it. So this is going to be uh, every single primary key, every single uh, index. Um, if you have a unique keyword, which we won't for this um, uh, for this project, uh, that's also in there. Uh, but all of those uh, get stored in this index object, which you can access basically by uh, opening, uh, basically by calling get indexes. Index itself has uh, a handful of, of different methods. Um, there's a list of columns that the index is defined over. There is a type and there is a name. Uh, for the most part, the name is there for debugging purposes only. You don't actually need to care uh, what the name is. Uh, some of them will actually be null. Um, there's also uh, a type of index. So the type is basically which keyword was used to define it. Um, so again, uh, it's either going to be a primary key or just a generic index. Um, and that's going to be defined as a string. And then the set of columns is the set of columns that the index should be built over. Uh, in general, we're only going to see one column indexes. Uh, but if you can support more than one column, uh, it's fairly easy to do as well. Questions so far? get into some actual uh, code then. So um, how does this actually, uh, so I'm asking you to, to build an index. Uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, I'm, there's a number of ways to actually build an index. Uh, you could build your own uh, B tree, B plus tree, uh, red black tree, blah, blah, blah. Um, but of course, uh, this isn't a data structures class. I'm going to assume everyone has at least uh, gone through the horror of trying to build their own red black tree. Um, and if not, uh, I'm, consider yourselves lucky. Um, and uh, I'm simply going to say that uh, the fine folks at uh, Sun and now Oracle uh, have taken care of uh, all of that wonderful stuff for you. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, although you should be by now, there's this wonderful package called java.util, 
uh, which has most of these data structures already defined. Um, in particular, we're going to be looking, uh, the, the reference implementation uh, makes use of two specific classes here, although that's not, uh, there are plenty of others that, uh, other ways to do this, uh, but the two that the reference implementation uses are hash map, which by now you're probably quite familiar with, and uh, tree map, which is, uh, a, uh, which is similar to hash map in that uh, it has a put and a get method, but it also has a handful of other uh, utility methods that make it uh, amenable to uh, doing range scans and uh, iterating over things uh, in sorted order. Um, questions so far? All right. So, um, let's, um, do, do, do. so this is basically the, um, the main method. And I'm going to insert a little bit of uh, this is the main method that uh, is part of the checkpoint one uh, solution. Uh, you'll get a checkpoint two solution in the next day or two. Um, but the basic uh, gist of it is that there's now this create table um, object. We'd like to uh, be able to use that um, to do some stuff. So rather than actually delving into the, the code uh, exactly the way that you'd see it written. Uh, I'm just going to kind of hack a few things uh, into the main method uh, just so you can kind of get a sense of how this process works. So let's uh, really quickly define um, give ourselves a little bit of a playground uh, to work with. So once we're in here, we basically have a create table statement and that create table statement uh, has a set of indexes. So we can loop over those indexes. So if we run the, um, uh, if we load up the customer relation, uh, we can see that there is a primary key index on cust key and that there is a index on market segment. Now, how do we actually, uh, how can we actually do stuff with these? Well, um, create table has a, uh, schema associated with it and uh, in lieu of actually finding the uh, index of cust key I'm just going to take um, the first uh, attribute and call that cust key. Um, all right so the we'd like to basically uh, build one of several types of indexes here. Um, let's say we want to build uh, a hash index. Well, um, this works exactly like creating a hash table in a hash map. You've got, you've got an index uh, for your key and you essentially want to uh, create a, um, create a mapping from primitive value um, t 
to primitive value. So we can do that. And when we're loading data into uh, a hash map, uh, be honest, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to go through the whole process of building code uh, to read stuff out of a CSV file. Uh, like any good programmer, I'm lazy. I don't want to uh, repeat code. So uh, think a few moments and realize that, wait a minute, I've already got code uh, to read data in uh, from a file. Um, I've got this uh, file scan operator um, in uh, plan. I've got this file scan operator in plan, uh, in the plan package that allows me to essentially just read data uh, as I see fit. So uh, there's a little helper method in the schema object that allows me to uh, read stuff out um, more quickly. Uh, where are we? There's a new uh, helper method, get file scan, uh, and I can give it a uh, table, the name of a table, and uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to make that an uppercase name. And from this point, it's basically just loading data into the hash map. code the key index. Um, and then let's try printing out um, when we get the row for 50. Um, and we need to make that printable. And Okay, so let's try running that. 
query. Oh, right. Um, we need to open the operator first. Should have been changed. All right. So uh, we build up our index and then are able to extract a uh, single row out of it. Um, Now, the, the tricky part uh, comes in, uh, so the, the part that you're probably a little, th this should have been basically familiar uh, ground so far. Um, any surprises so far? Any, anything un unexpected? OK. So the interesting part here uh, comes in when you swap your uh, hash map out for a tree map. Uh, so tree map gives you a few extra uh, little features uh, in that it allows you to scan multiple records at the same time. Uh, so the, if you just swap a tree map for a hash map, or sorry, if you just replace a hash map with a tree map, uh, it's not actually going to change any of the behavior, at least not drastically. Oh, oops. Uh, because you need a comparator. And I'm going to cheat here and borrow um, comparator from here. Um, So um, the one distinction for the tree map is that you need uh, to tell it how to compare uh, to records. Um, it's fairly easy to do using uh, Java's comparator interface. Um, but once you've done that, created a tree map uh, and loaded all of your data into the tree map, uh, the tree map can be swapped in for a hash map pretty much trivially. Um, you can see all it really took was defining a, a comparator and uh, changing the tree map to a hash, uh, hash map to a tree map. The real power of uh, tree map comes in uh, when you uh, use three particular uh, methods that are defined on tree map. Uh, so there's one method called head map. Uh, there's one method called tail map, and there's one method called sub map. And what each of these methods will do is that they, they'll expose a uh, subset of the records in the tree map that satisfy some constraint. Uh, so head map will uh, return all of, will create a, uh, a view of the map uh, that contains all of the records that are greater than, sorry, that are less than uh, some key or uh, equal to some key, depending on how you set that, uh, the inclusive parameter. Um, head map. Um, and uh, tail map is going to give you all of the records that are less than uh, some key. So let's actually see that uh, in practice here. Uh, so let's loop over some set of records. Uh, so let's say we're interested, uh, we're interested in um, uh, low equals uh, all of the records from 50 to, let's say, 60. Uh, 
uh, not inclusive on either end. Um, so we can loop um, over, let's say, the submap. Um, so we've got index sub map uh, from low to high. Um, oh, and map doesn't actually have a iterator method. We need to tell it we're interested only in the values. Um, and then we print out all of the records that we just got. And there you have it. Um, it uh, basically uh, submap pretty much does exactly what uh, as what, adver uh, what advertised um, returns a uh, a map containing all of the records with keys from 50 to 60. Uh, not inclusive on that, yeah. Uh, so default behavior is to include the low end and not include the high end. Um, but uh, there's also a way of overriding that. So if I were to specify, where are we? Um, if I were to use uh, submap low, and let's say I didn't want it to be inclusive, uh, and I wanted the high end to be inclusive, um, I could specify that as well. And 51 to 60. Uh, if I do head map, it does pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, except now we only specify a upper bound uh, just so that we're not overwhelmed with results. Let's make that 10. Um, And as you can see, records from one, uh, one is the first record in the set entirely, uh, in the table entirely. So this basically gives all the records up to and including 10, um, or if not including 10 if I set it to false. Uh, OK, so um, OK, so this is, this is kind of the, the basic uh, gist of, um, of using Java, uh, Java maps as uh, in-memory indexes. Um, talk a little bit about how to use, um, how to actually uh, turn uh, turn uh, constraints into index lookups. Uh, but before that, uh, any other questions about tree map, hash map? Okay. Um, right. So. OK, so um, something that's going to be very, very useful um, for um, something that's going to be very, very useful here uh, is uh, in JSQL parser, uh, the expression uh, expressions has a sub package called operators.relational. And this is basically each of the uh, comparison operations. Now, if you look at the uh, queries, 
that you've been processing so far, uh, three, five, and, uh, and nine in particular, um, there, each of the, the queries is basically looking at a, subs, uh, a conjunction of these uh, relational uh, comparisons. You're already probably fairly f uh, familiar with the equals to, uh, the equals to operator. Uh, in this case, we're also looking, uh, going to be looking at greater than, greater than equals, uh, minor than, and minor than equals. Um, essentially, anytime we see one of those in a condition sitting on top of a selection predicate, uh, we need to convert that into an index. Uh, look up. So, so from the optimizer's perspective, we're basically looking at two uh, new types of rewrites. Uh, so one is a selection operator sitting on top of a relation where there is some condition in here where the condition uh, ha satisfies a couple of properties. Um, so first we need an index. The, the condition needs to be uh, some sort of attribute in R. Um, and then uh, compared to either equals, less than, less than equals, greater than, greater than equals, uh, compared to uh, some constant uh, or expression that you can evaluate. Um, I'll note that in some cases this is actually flipped. So um, this is essentially equal to anything uh, A. Uh, and you should be able to handle both cases correctly. Um, but basically, if you have one of these conditions and it turns out that you have an index on R dot A um, and that index is capable of handling whichever uh, comparison that uh, you've gotten, then this can basically turn into an index scan. The other optimization is if you have a selection predicate uh, sitting on top of a cross product, sitting on top of anything, and a relation. Uh, because this, you can turn into an index nested loop join. Um, Uh, one thing to note is that unlike most joins uh, in a relational plan, uh, index nested loop joins are generally unary operate, uh, considered to be unary operators. Um, they only have one child. Um, the other side uh, is technically a relation, but you can't really push anything down into that relation. You can't really do any uh, additional computations uh, on that operator because um, for uh, the index lookup doesn't actually uh, shouldn't actually know what to do about any any additional operators pushed down into there. Um, but that's that is uh, again um, that is again uh, the general uh, idea of it. Uh, questions so far? Okay, uh, we're actually going a fair bit of, uh, ahead of schedule. Um,
Anything else uh, that I can go into more detail on here? quick example of uh, building a unclustered index, because that's kind of a little bit weird. Um, so for an unclustered index, you need some way of representing uh, the original uh, tuple. Um, in the reference implementation, this is done by using the, uh, the primary key uh, of the relation, but that's not strictly speaking required. Um, so, like I said, um, all of the indexes, all of the primary key indexes uh, are clustered unique hash indexes in, in the reference implementation. Uh, all of the uh, regular indexes are unclustered non unique tree indexes. So, as most of you found out, uh, in doing the hash um, uh, the hash join implementation um, in order to do a non-unique uh, index you need uh, to have a list of indexes um, a list of, of uh, values that you're matching so in this case, our, uh, our tree map is going to be our secondary index, and it's going to be a uh, mapping from a key to some list, uh, from some, some uh, index key. Uh, in other words, for, um, for the customer relation, uh, we're defining a customer, uh, an index on customer key and an index on market segment. And uh, where are we? Um, and so we're going to have um, the market segments be on uh, be the key to the tree map, and then we're going to have row IDs be the uh, the primitive values that link us to the unclustered index. Uh, sorry, the clustered index. And then, of course, we also need a clustered index, um, which is going to give us our uh, actual uh, store our actual data. All right. <coughs> Again, I'm going to hard code this. Although, in general, uh, you have the resources to figure out which column it is. 1, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, OK. So we're going to do uh, two things when we build the index. Uh, first, we're going to um, we're going to uh, add um, the uh, row to the primary index, and then we're also going to uh, add it to the secondary index as well. Uh, here, however, we need to figure out if there's already a key.
So what we're doing here uh, is looking to see if there's already uh, an entry for that particular secondary key. And if uh, whether there is or not, uh, we want to add uh, the current row's primary key, uh, which we know is a unique way of identifying that particular row uh, to the list of entries for that secondary index. Now, uh, we've got a, we'd like to find, let's say, all of the, um, all of the uh, customers in the building segment, let's say. So, um, so let's look those up. So first thing we're going to get when we do a lookup on the secondary index is going to be a list of records. Good. Build it. And that is a list of every customer ID in the building segment. So now we need to uh, actually get the actual uh, rows themselves. And we can do that by basically referring to our primary index um, so we're going to do that like so. Uh, so we're going to get back a list of target uh, of target primary keys. And then we need to look up each of them in turn. And now if we run that, we get all of the customers in the building segment. So uh, we've, so for a secondary index, um, again, in order to use the secondary index, you need a, uh, the, in order to use an unclustered index, you need a clustered index sitting around uh, that actually lets you get the uh, actual values that you're you're reading from. Uh, any questions on uh, secondary indexes or anything up to this point? OK, uh, well, in that case, uh, that is all I have uh, for today. Um, I'll take additional questions for the next uh, 25 minutes, but free to go. Uh, yeah, that's that's a great question. So the uh, Hank asked uh, which uh, which of these tasks provides the biggest bang for the buck. Um, so uh, the very very biggest bang for the buck uh, that you can get is just loading the data into memory and parsing it. Um, if you 
in your create table statement, if the only thing that you do is read the data into memory, make sure it's parsed into a, a sequence of, uh, of primitive value arrays, um, that will provi probably provide you a quite large, uh, quite substantial uh, performance boost. Uh, the next thing I would suggest doing after that is either uh, nested, is either the uh, index nested loop join or uh, the uh, index scan. Uh, you'll get different uh, benefits on different queries. Um, so, for example, for query one, uh, the biggest bang will come from the uh, the index scan. Well, for something like uh, query three, you're going to get a lot more benefit uh, from an index nested loop join. Um, which of those you use is, uh, wh which of those you go for first, um, they're both going to improve uh, some queries and they're both going to uh, stack on each other uh, to, to do much better. So, good question. Mumble, mumble. A lot of the infrastructure was there already, but oh, it's. Okay. Uh, then again, I'm sharing that infrastructure, so. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it is a total of a couple hundred lines of code, um, the implementation. Or the, the change to the reference implementation is a couple hundred lines of code. They're non-trivial lines of code, so not necessarily the best measure, but um, it's uh, given the fact that you have about a month, uh, it should be doable. <laughs>